Good day, Grade Tools. Welcome to the second lesson in Week 23 on Electrodynamics. In this lesson, you're going to learn much more about alternating current. I please want you to watch the next video on the alternating current from the Mindset Learn team. Make sure that you've understood it, rewatch it again if you've missed some points, and then go do the assessment in the Turnable system to make sure you know how to do this. We already know that electricity can be generated using a moving coil of wire inside a magnetic field. Today, we are going to look at how the electricity made by these generators is used and how it gets to the electrical outlets in our homes. AC stands for alternating current. Until now, we have worked on circuits that used direct current, or DC. All the countries in the world use alternating current at various voltages in businesses and homes. In South Africa, we use alternating current with a voltage of 220 volts at 50 hertz. You should be very careful when visiting different countries as they have different voltages and frequencies that may damage our appliances or make them work poorly. Why don't we use direct current? The answer lies in a battle between two very famous inventors. You may recognize the name of the first one, Thomas Edison. Thomas Edison was famous for making the first commercial light bulb and wanted to power the world using direct current. But a young scientist and inventor, Nikolai Tesla, demonstrated that alternating current was actually a better system because it could travel longer distances and its voltage could be changed easily using a transformer. Tesla had also invented the alternating current generator, which did not need a split ring commutator and was therefore more efficient. We now all use Tesla's system of alternating current because of those reasons. We need to be aware of how alternating current is made before we can understand its behavior. An alternating current generator produces voltage that first causes current in one direction and then the other. The graph of voltage versus time may be a little confusing at first, but let's take a closer look and make some things clearer. When we see the graph of EMF versus time, immediately, we see that the graph goes above and below the zero volts line. This means that electricity is first flowing one direction and then the other. When the cell phone charger is plugged in, the current goes one direction and then the other and back again. It repeats this 50 times in a second, giving us the 50 hertz marked on it. The other marking you would have seen on the cell phone charger is 220 VAC, or 220 volts, alternating current. The 220 is the average voltage. The correct term for this average is the RMS voltage. RMS stands for root mean square. So that clearly means that sometimes the voltage is actually higher than 220 volts. This is often called the peak voltage. It's marked as the highest and lowest voltages that can be reached during the cycle. There is a mathematical relationship between the two voltages. When you see the relationship, you'll understand where the term root mean squared comes from. The VRMS is calculated by dividing the peak voltage by the square root of 2. See if you can figure out what the peak voltage in South Africa is if we have an RMS voltage of 220 volts. If we substitute the RMS voltage into the equation and solve for peak voltage, we find that the voltage actually reaches 311 volts. Remember from grade 10 that when a voltage is applied, a current begins to flow in conductors. We can say that current is directly proportional to voltage. So, if we look at the current versus time graph, it looks almost identical to the voltage versus time graph from earlier. The RMS current can also be calculated using a similar equation to the RMS voltage. 
now that we've investigated the details of alternating voltages and currents. Let's see if there is anything else worth calculating about the electricity we use. When looking at the label on appliances, very often the voltage as well as the power consumption are shown. The equation to calculate the power consumption of an alternating current appliance is the same as the one you used before. The RMS voltage multiplied by the RMS current. See if you can find the current that flows through this appliance. If we substitute into our equation and solve for current, we find that this appliance uses 9.09 amps of current. That's not all. Ohm's law also works for RMS calculations. The equation works just as well for alternating current. The resistance of an alternating current appliance is still equal to the RMS voltage divided by the RMS current. Remember earlier in the episode, I told you that alternating current is better than direct current for long distances. That's because alternating current can be used in a transformer to change the voltage. The alternating current in the primary coil creates a constant change in the magnetic flux in the second coil. Because the second coil has more turns, according to Faraday's law, more voltage comes out of the transformer. We call this a step-up transformer. Step-up transformers increase the voltage produced at power stations because higher voltage travels further with less energy loss than a lower voltage. If our power grid was built using direct current, we could not use transformers and in a big country like South Africa, we need electricity to travel long distances. I've really enjoyed sharing the magic of electrodynamics with you. So until next time, check out the other videos as well as a task video later in this series or look at the Mindset website at www.mindset.co.city forward slash learn. Goodbye.